Hello, and welcome to another hit film tutorial with your host, me, Axel Wilkinson. I've made this video to accompany a blog post Simon put together discussing how to recreate a specific still image that was used in an earlier blog post. Check out his original post for the full rundown, but there are a couple of techniques he discussed involving atomic particles and the particle simulator which benefit from a bit of visual aid, and it is those bits that we will focus on in this video. So the first thing we will look at is using atomic particles to create this star field. HitFilm offers a number of different tools and techniques that can be used to create star fields, and atomic particles is an excellent choice for creating star fields that have a bit of structure to them. It's very quick and can often create a more interesting sky than just an even scattering of stars. So let's take a look. Here you can see the result of our effect, but I'm going to turn off this glow layer and then just reset that and the atomic particles to their defaults. And here we can see the grid of particles that the atomic particle effect is based on. It breaks our layer into this grid, and then we can distort and warp this grid to atomize the layer. The fractal controls contain the main settings for adjusting this distortion, so we will start there. Displace strength bends the rows and columns of particles like a flag waving in the wind. Disperse strength scatters the individual particles out of line from the rest of their row. The balance of these two properties lets us control how much structure is present so that we can get some areas where there's more negative space between the stars and some areas where the particles are much closer together. To decrease the number of stars, because this is a bit thick, we can go into the particle placement and we can just bring down the number of particles that's being used there. And then to get more depth into the effect, we can increase the Z setting, which basically creates additional layers of those particle grids. These are at different distances from the camera so that we get a wider variety in the size of the particles just because of their proximity to the camera. To adjust the size of the particles, let's close the placement and open the particle appearance, and we can increase the size random which helps a lot, and then we'll just bring the size down a touch. And then back in the fractal controls, we'll increase the size strength here as well, and that gets us right into the range where we want to be to create a star field. Since we're creating a still image here, we don't need these particles moving around, so by setting the speed to zero, we can remove the motion from this effect. Now to add a little bit of glow to finish off this star field look, we'll use the glow effect. I'll turn that back on, and let's set the blend mode to add, which just makes the effect a little bit more dramatic, a little bit brighter. Then we'll bring the threshold right down, increase the intensity quite a bit, and then you could leave it there. I'm going to adjust the radius just to soften that blur a little bit more. I'm going to turn that up a bit, and there is our star field image. Of course, you can easily modify the exact result you get. Just by adjusting these two settings, you can get a wide variety of different appearances, which makes atomic particles a very fast and powerful way to create images of this sort. Once the starry sky is ready, Simon repurposed the techniques from an earlier tutorial on creating Andrew Kramer's star effect to make a planet for our image. With the planet ready, we can turn our attention to creating these arcing white lines. To create the web of curving lines representing the interconnectedness of the world here, we will use particles. The general concept is to use a large circular emitter and send mobile emitters upward in a cone shape. The particles coming off these mobile emitters will create the trails that we see here, and then we will use a force to pull them back downward and create the curves. So, to start with, I'm just going to add a new particle simulator to our timeline, and then I'll go ahead and hide the existing particles, and I'll hide these other layers as well just so that things stay snappy. And in the emitter, let's set the shape to circle, and then in the orientation, we'll rotate that 90 degrees so it's facing upward instead of toward the camera, and then increase the radius of that circle until it's just a bit wider than our frame. For the trajectory, we'll select target, and then in the position for our target, we'll set the Z to 1000, 
and that moves all the particles upward. Normally Z would move them toward the camera, but remember we rotated this, so now Z is facing upward. And now we will delete this particle system and add a mobile emitter. By increasing the life, we can get more trails present and we'll increase the speed as well to make those trails a bit longer. We don't need to see these red particles which represent the mobile emitters themselves. So in the appearance for the mobile emitters, just set the alpha to zero. And now we can go into the particle systems that are being generated by these mobile emitters. Set the speed of these particles to zero so they don't move and we'll get straight lines. Then increase their life to make those lines a bit longer. We can adjust their scale to thin the lines out a bit, get them closer to the look that we're after. All right, now there's a bit of gap between the particles in those lines, but that's okay. We can adjust that in the general controls just by increasing the number of particles that are being emitted. I'm not mentioning the exact values I'm using on a lot of these controls just because I want you to experiment to see what you think looks good. Plus, you can see my settings in the video if you really want to. All right, now we're going to add a force, clicking the new force button, and we'll set its type to attraction and immediately things get pretty wonky. What's happening is all of our particles are being pulled around by this force and being pulled in toward the center of our frame, which gives kind of a cool look here, but it's not really what we're after. So first let's reduce the strength of this force by quite a bit to, so it doesn't pull things around as severely. But what we really want is for the mobile emitters to get pulled downward, but for the trails to stay put. So back in the particle system for our mobile emitter, in the general controls, we can turn off affected by forces, and suddenly we get a sort of dome of these particle trails being created there, which is what we're after. Let's bring the entire layer downward until it sits properly over our planet. So I'll just turn our planet back on for reference, and then we can just bring this downward until it's sitting nicely over the planet there. And then we can use the lifetime panel to finish off these particle trails. All right, so we wanna make sure that we have our particle system selected, not the mobile emitter. Select the particle system, then we'll move into the lifetime panel, and in the alpha, we wanna create a gradient so that these particles fade in pretty quickly and then fade out. So we'll add a couple of control points at either end where it's faded out, and then we'll move the center point up quite a ways so it fades in quickly and then fades out gradually and then we're going to do a very similar thing in the scale we'll create a new point at the beginning set that to zero create a new point at the end set that to zero and then we'll select this point where the scale reaches a hundred and we'll move that closer to the start so that it ramps up quickly and then gradually fades out because we're creating a still image, we can now pick the frame that we want to use to create our final picture. I like the look of this frame at six seconds, but you can pick whatever frame you prefer. With the arcs complete, Simon then went on to create some glowy spheres using auto light flares and then colorizing the entire image by means of a grade layer using an assortment of effects. Jump over to his blog post if you want to read more about the specific techniques he used. It nicely demonstrates how even though HitFilm is designed for working with video, it can be handily implemented to create still images as well. Thanks for watching.